truth is not easy. No one likes to hear it. The ones whom speak it are usually passed off as crazy or problem makers. Sometimes. But when it comes down to it, when an event happens, all appreciate it. Let's begin. We can start by no longer calling our climate change phenomenon the global warming period. It had passed into its final phase in 2008. It should be called the volcanic era or the volcanic period. This in turn will trigger the cooling period. The facts. There have been 50 recorded volcanic eruptions since 1774. This is for a 237 year period. 18 volcanic eruptions have occurred from 1774 to 2008. This is for a 234 year period. 32 volcanic eruptions have occurred from 2008 to 2011. This is for the past three year period. There have been 14 volcanic eruptions to the end of September 2011. This is for the past nine month period. One volcanic eruption places more carbon emissions in the atmosphere than the entire history of all of mankind's CO2 emissions. We have had 14 volcanic eruptions this year alone to August, September 2011. The United Nations Scientific Advisory Panel, the IPCC, now tells us to prepare for water rise. This will not occur either. Water rise happens at the end of cooling periods, not warming periods. The facts. Our ice core sampling done by the European Group of Science in 2008 tells us volcanoes occur at the end of warming periods. This is what causes cooling periods. The IPCC is wrong again. Hume, IPCC panel member, has admitted to falsifying records for the UN report for Kyoto in 1996. Please refer to Scientific American Weekly Magazine, November 2010 edition. This fact is leading us to disastrous consequences. Stay tuned for more aggressive activities from the IPCC to defend their stance. However, Northern Ice Melt studies published in December 2010 by the Joint University of Alaska and the Russian Federation of Science tells us the following. Global warming is catalyst driven by frozen methane hydrates warming, releasing CO2 into the atmosphere in a feedback loop. The warming period cannot be reduced, reversed, nor stopped. Just as the 12,000 year event did, with the exception the cause was an asteroid impact to trigger the methane release, this period too will come to its natural conclusion. Volcanoes will occur in greater frequency for a period of 15 to 20 years until enough ash and acids enter the atmosphere that prevents the sun's rays from reaching the earth for a 6 to 8 month period. This is followed by an 80 year cooling cycle period by the year 2015 to 2025. Temperatures will begin to range worldwide from minus 10 degrees to minus 70 degrees. Tundra and desert areas will expand. The temperature returns, it will be about 300 to 350 years, and the new ice will melt, causing water rise of 5 to 7 meters. Also, as acids and ash form hydrogen peroxide, are trapped in the ice, as the ice melts, hydrocarbons then filter this material and super oxygenates the atmosphere, creating excellent conditions for plant and animal growth. The earth will have fertile soil and fresh water for another 10 to 12,000 years until it occurs again. This is not a planet ending event. With proper preparation, four out of five persons in the developed world can live through this event quite comfortably. The cycle is very simple and easy to understand. 
It is called glacial ice return or glacial ice rebound, depending on where you are in the world. This is just a simple physics of pressures. As warming causes glacial ice to weaken and break, enormous pressures are lifted off of the tectonic plates. The planet then adjusts with internal pressures causing volcanic eruptions approximately three months past the ice break. Seven months after the volcanic eruptions, the tectonic plates finish their adjustment of energies causing earthquakes. This is a total of ten months after the ice break. There have now been enough activities to prove this theory as true. In short, this theory makes all previous global warming models outdated and irrelevant, including the models all governments and businesses following in 2011. The facts are 14 glacial ice breaks, 14 volcanic eruptions three months past the glacial break, 14 earthquakes 10 months past the glacial break, the overlay we are showing on the frames of this video is currently a list of glacial breaks to volcanic eruption to earthquakes that have occurred. If the patterns of this theory stay consistent, there are more events to come. We may yet warn our friends from far off lands and at home. Seismologists are correct, earthquakes cannot be predicted. However, glacial ice rebound has been proven and earthquakes can be projected. Certain volcanic chains have patterns that cause reactions in other areas. Guys who study these things, get in touch with this. Start working. Melting ice in northern waters leads to cooler currents. Methane, released from melted permafrost, sparks huge northern fires as dry warm air dries out wood and scrub brush burns. Warmer southern oceans with pressures from cool to warm cause warmer currents. Air currents are similar and as cooler northern oceans cause cooler currents, our weather, while the same, increases in intensities. This is why there are seemingly larger hurricanes and more tornadoes. The North and Midwest will experience more precipitation in off-seasons. Erosion in both natural and man-made in concert with longer-lasting storms causing more flooding. Snowfalls as well. Animals will continue to migrate north as they have before. Thank you for viewing. Please stay tuned for the next update.